Hi, welcome to another HQ Watch and Learn. Today we're going to be talking about all about pantographs. So I'm Johnny Barfus, an educator here at Handy Quilter. With me, I'm Christina Whitney, another educator here at Handy Quilter. Again, we're going to talk about all about pantographs and quilting from behind today. So Christina is our expert at the pantographs, right? I will take credit for that today. She's definitely our <laughs> expert. So Everybody's well educated on yep. it. <laughs> so if you come into the Handy Quilter Studios for training, our basic training, we will teach that. And Christine is usually, usually the one that teaches that for us. Let's start first with how to choose a pantograph, right? How about before that, let's explain what a pantograph is. Oh, perfect. Okay, so a pantograph is just a paper piece that covers the entire quilt. I mean, and it doesn't have to be an all over edge to edge. Mm -hmm. It could be a border piece. And you can either do the paper version that you can follow from the back of the machine with a laser, or you can also use the computerized systems and those can stitch out a pantograph as well. Right. So for today, we're gonna talk about the paper pantographs that we use to do an all over edge to edge design quilting from the back of the machine. All right, so first let's talk about choosing a pantograph. These are printed out on paper, and you want to make sure you get the right size as a, in, re, uh, sorry, in relationship to your throat space. Right? Correct, so yes. So this one here, it says, new leaf, six inch wide rows. This one here says five and a half inch wide rows. So that would be perfect to get basically in any throat space. Correct. It's about a six, mm -hmm. inch, six inches high, right? Yes, but some pantographs come a lot wider, and you might not have the appropriate throat space especially after you've advanced your fabric quite a bit mm -hmm. and you're at the bottom of your quilt because all of that bulk on this back pole right. is going to make your throat space smaller. Right. So to avoid that, just use a smaller pantograph size. Yeah. And I usually say approximately six-ish six -ish inches less than your machine size. Um, but again, that's just a, a wide range if you're using the pantographs for a baby quilt, you're not going to have as much roll up. Whereas if you're doing a king size quilt with a fluffy polyester batting mm -hmm. and minky backing, you're going to lose a lot more throat space. So okay. things to take into consideration when you're purchasing your pantographs. Awesome. Okay. Also to note here, so this one here has a registration marks from the Roby previously mm -hmm. and then one to line up with. This is what you'll actually be stitching out. and. You want to choose something simple. If you're just getting started, make sure you choose something easy, something simple that doesn't cross over a lot. This one here, you'll notice, does cross over just one spot. Mm -hmm. And then again, notice these registration marks to line up with the previous row. Yep. Right? Yep. Sometimes I call them my ghost lines. So mm -hmm. if I refer to them as ghost lines later on, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Our, our registration lines. Things to look for in the design. Uh -huh. When I'm doing pantographs, I really like to have curves because they're a little bit smoother going, but I also really like to have points. Points are a place where you can stop with your needle down, take a break, breathe, adjust your foot positioning as you're moving along. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you start again, you're not gonna get like a little jagged part in your curve because right. it's right on that point. Yep. So look for points and look for curves. Okay, and this one has a little bit of both. It has points and curves. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this one just okay. for a moment. So this okay. one. This one is a little bit trickier. It's kind of busy. And you'll notice, I'm going to trace this with my finger. And I tell people to do this any time before starting a pantograph, to actually trace the pattern out and get familiar mm -hmm. with it. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to start here because there's a point there. And I'm going to follow it around following the design, come to another point, point, and pause on those points also. Here, it's a little bit trickier because I've got multiple lines there that cross. And if I were to pause right there, say to move my feet or to blink or something, when I start again, I might not know which direction I was going. Mm -hmm. And since you're in the back of the machine, you can't see very well on front. I mean, you could look over and tell. Right. But for a beginning pantograph, um, that might be a little bit of a harder thing for them to do. Okay. So those are just some good things to look at. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, now, show us how you get started with the pantograph on that side. Okay, first of all, I'm going to talk about our machine setup. So I've got it, 
I've got my quilt top already loaded. It is ready to go. I've got my th machine threaded. I'm going to lift that needle up. Is my needle up there? Your needle is up. Okay, Johnny's my eyes on the front today. So I'm going to just move this up. And for the settings, you can set it on the front of the machine or on the back of your machine. And I'm just going to tell you the settings that I've found that work best for me. I, as I always tell everybody, find what works best for you. So for my settings, I like to have mine at about 10 to 12 stitches per inch. Right now, I'm at 12 stitches per inch. I like to be in regulated because I like those inches to, or those stitches to be the same. Right. And I like cruise mode. And again, personal preference. So I, I, so I've already selected cruise mode, and I'm at a speed of about 225. And I like a higher speed just because it helps me flow better as I'm doing this all over design. I also really highly recommend that you stop with your needle in the down position. So you can actually select that here on your screen so that anytime I stop, it's going to hold my place there. And I don't have to worry about the machine accidentally bumping or getting moved around. Right. Okay? Um, what other things? Can you think of any questions about setting up the machine? No, I was going to point out the needle down. Tell us why that is. The needle down? Uh huh. So why do you want to stop and needle down? So that when I stop, I don't run the risk of the machine moving. Okay. So it, it, I call it my placeholder. Okay. I like okay? that. Okay. One thing I do want to point out up at the front, Johnny, can you show everybody what foot I have on there? You have the glide foot on here. This is a piece top, mm -hmm. and that's going to ensure that it just goes smoothly over the top, right? Yes. And the biggest reason why I like the glide foot when I'm doing pantographs is because I stitch off the edge. I'm always going to start about an half an inch to an inch off the side and off the top um, so that I don't accidentally advance and it's not far enough and I missed a spot. Mm -hmm. It's just security. But with this glide foot, it also is security because if I have a regular foot on, I run the risk of it catching on my basting. And I've basted this down pretty close to the edge, yeah. <clears throat> but sometimes it would flip the edges over or get caught somehow. So the glide foot just it just glides. Yeah. Hence its name, glides. It looks really good. <laughs> so that, that's a little bit of an insurance thing there. Okay, so I've got my machine set up. Now I need to get my pantograph set up. Okay. I'm just going to move that over there. All right. I've already taped my pantograph down onto my table. And I like to have mine just flush up against the table because I, I know my table is straight. Right. And that's going to keep my design straight. It just makes things smooth for me. Um, I've taped it down with painter's tape. Other options are um, covering it with vinyl. And then you can do your markings on that vinyl and not directly on the paper so right. you can reuse it later. Okay. So next thing that I want to do is actually, I'm going to draw on my pantograph. Okay. I am going to pick a spot. And this is just a, a random spot. There's no science behind it. And it's, you know, a little bit of ways to the left of my machine, where my laser is going to be. And I'm just going to take a regular ruler, and I'm going to draw a line down here. This line is going to represent about an inch off of my quilt. So my actual quilt top might be, like, over here, but this is where I'm going to be stitching to. And that is also going to be my travel line. Okay. So that's another reason why I like to be off of the edge of the quilt right. so that I can travel. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing drawing a horizontal line. I am going to pick right about here because I want this part of the design to actually stitch on my quilt. So I'm going to draw this line and mine's probably not going to be perfectly straight. But you get the, the idea of that. Yeah. Okay. And I would just do that all the way across. And that line represents the top of my quilt. Okay. And this is my left hand side of my quilt. Right. So now what I want to do is actually move my machine into position. So Johnny, you're my eyeballs. Can you move the machine so that the needle is about a half an inch to an inch 
off the top and off the left hand side of the quilt and just drop the needle there? Yes, right there. Perfect. Okay, I'm actually going to change my line. I should have had the machine in position first, but we had moved it. So right now, my, li my line's really close uh -huh. to the edge. So I'm just going to shift it over. Okay. So sorry for confusing you. Learn from my mistakes. Put the needle in first. So I'm going to make that be my new left hand. And we'll cross that one out. All right. Okay. So if you look at this, this dot right here, or the crosshair, where that is, is my needle. Mm -hmm. But my light is over here. Okay. I want my light, the laser light equals your needle. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just adjust my light here. You can also, if your laser light is like a, a large beam, mm -hmm. you can take a screwdriver right in there, yeah. tighten it down, and it will make your beam be a little bit more tight. Yeah. What's a better word Pointed, for that? Pointed, pointy, I don't know. You get the gist. A smaller point, a smaller dot. Yes, that works. Okay, so that's pretty close for me. Okay. Um, so now I know that my laser and my machine are matched up. Yeah, so you now you're just refresh or re, redo that. Okay. Say that. You, your n laser equals your needle. Laser light equals the needle. Right. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so the next step is to figure out where I want to start quilting. Okay. I'm looking at this pattern here, and I'm not going to start quilting here because that's not part of the pattern. Right. So I need to find out where on this pattern I'm going to stitch. Um, so I'm going to come in, doo -doo -doo, again, follow me with my finger. Okay, that's where I hit it, okay. right there. So that's going to be my start point. And I'm just going to put a little circle right there. And I'm going to move this over out of my way. Okay. So I would lift up my needle, move my machine so that the laser is now where my horizontal line from the left side of my quilt that I drew crosses that design. Okay. I'm going to drop the needle there. I'm going to pull it back or have you pull up my bobbin for me. Okay. It's called the buddy system. It works nicely. Okay. I got your bobbin up. Okay. So fingers clear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a tie off. Excellent. Okay. So I'm ready to stitch. Okay. Just a couple pointers before I actually start stitching. I want to look ahead of where I'm going. I don't want to be looking. It's like driving a car. Right. Okay? You're looking far distance. You're not looking at the bumper of the car right in front of you. Right. Same thing with quilting. We want to be looking ahead and anticipating what's going to come next. If, no, let me rephrase that. When you go off of the line, don't jerk the machine back. Just gradually bring it back and make it smooth. The best part about doing pantographs is that this paper, this design, mm -hmm. does not go with this quilt to whoever you're giving it to. Right. Nobody's going to know if you went off the line a little bit unless you jerk it back and make a really crazy look. Right. So those are a couple of tips. Okay. Um, I'm going to stitch just a little bit, and I'm going to have you check my tension. We should adjust tension prior to doing this, but I'm just going to have you check, make sure everything's working All properly. Right. Okay, so I'm going to stand just a little bit to the left of my machine to start. Elbows are in, and shoulders down. I'm breathing. And let's stitch. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, and I don't want to continue following that line because it's off the side and I don't want to hit clamps or anything that's out of there. Mm -hmm. So remember earlier I called that my travel line? Right. I'm just going to travel right up that line to the next section and continue on. Okay, I'm going to stop at a point. Johnny, how does everything look up there? It looks great. Your tension looks nice. Feels good. Okay. Yep, you're good. Um, one other tip. When you're stitching from the back, you can't see if your thread breaks up at the front. So you can watch your thread right here. If the thread's not coming up, you know something is wrong. Okay? That's a great tip. Okay, I'm breathing again. Whew. 
Ready to go. Okay, stopping at a point. I'm going to shift my feet a little bit. After you've done pantographs for a while, you can move your feet while you're in motion. But to start, just stop with the needle down, reposition, and then you're ready to go again. Any other tips that I'm forgetting to mention before I keep on going? I don't think so. I think you should go for it. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Okay, you can see I'm at the end of my quilt now, but I forgot to draw my stopping line. So before you ever start quilting, you should also bring the machine over to the edge of the right hand side of your quilt top and mark a line here also. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick and then I'll finish up this side. So right now my laser light is right on the very edge of my quilt and I want to go off by about half an inch. So I'm just going to set my ruler down make it about half an inch off and I'm going to now draw my line which represents the right hand side of my quilt and you'll notice that I still need to quilt this section here and this section here um, so I'm going to use that travel line so let me show you that real quick pausing at the point coming up I'm going to travel down the line coming around, travel up the line, and travel back. And now is my whole first row yep, filled up? Yep, you're right off the quilt. Excellent. I'm going to take a tie-off stitch there, and I'm going to have Johnny pull up my bobbin thread for me. So if you don't have a, an assistant quilting with you, which I highly recommend everyone <laughs> get yourself a quilting assistant, <laughs> but if you don't have that luxury, you can just run around the front yep. to clip your thread, and then You'll go back to the next row. So let's now talk about, right, advancing. Yes, um, I actually have enough room in my throat space that I can stitch another one. So I'm not going to advance the fabric itself. Okay. I think I've got enough room. You yep, should. I should have plenty of room. But I only have one row on this design. Okay. So I need to advance the design to get it set up so I can do the next one. Right. So we talked earlier about this registration line or the ghost line. That is the row that we just quilted after we advance it. So what I'm going to do is I want to find a point. I like to kind of go in the middle of my quilt. I'm going to find this point. So I'm going to take it up to the point where I was just quilting. I'm going to drop my needle there. Actually, I am not going to drop my needle there because we're not actually going to... Let's show them how to advance the fabric while we're at it. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to drop my needle there, and we're going to take clamps off. Okay. I'll grab this side. A lot of pantographs will actually come with two rows that you can stitch, and so if you have throat space, you can do both mm -hmm. of them at the same time. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll advance. I'll pull this up. Needle is down, so the fabric is moving. And if you watch here, oops, sorry, the laser light is moving. So instead of it being up here, it's moving, and I want the laser light to come to that point representing the row that I've already quilted. Okay. So, so how close are we? We're getting there. And I'm going to take it just a tiny bit past it, and then when you tighten up those first two just a little bit, my needle or my laser light is on that point of the ghost line that represents this row that I already stitched. All right, perfect. Okay, so now so I would... And then we put back the side clamps, right? Yes, I'm going to lift the needle up because okay. I don't like to move the machine and forget the needles down from the back. 
And I'm going to just check a couple places. So Johnny, I'm going to move my machine. And is that pretty close to a point? Yes, it is. OK, excellent. Right there, yep. So as I'm checking, I also have to remember that when I was quilting, I might not have hit that point exactly on the, mm -hmm. the paper here. Mm -hmm. So it might be off by just a little bit. But we're just kind of getting it in the general area. Right. OK. And that looks good. I saw you stop with that one. That looks good as well. Perfect. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come up to this next starting point, needle down, needle up, bring up my bobbin thread, and then stitch out the next row. OK. And after each row, I could advance. I do want to show one other thing with repositioning if, say, your laser light got bumped or something went off. OK. OK. So what I'm going to do is um, I just had you bring up the bobbin and do a tie off. But we're just going to kind gonna of drag it around. <laughs> I'm not going to quilt that one right now. OK. Let me cut that off for you. It is really nice having a quilting buddy. <laughs> Especially when they giggle. <laughs> yes. Get yourself a quilting buddy. OK, I'm, I'm going to mess up my laser here. Oh, man. My laser is now not matched up with what I've already quilted. Right. So I'm, John I'm Johnny. Johnny, I'm going to have you move the machine so that the needle is on one of those points okay. that we've already quilted. Right. I'm going to go to this point right here, and it's the top okay where it goes up into that point so it's that point right there yep. mm -hmm. okay so now i'm just going to adjust my laser light and now it is repositioned with what i've already quilted yeah and you could just drop your needle there mm -hmm. like i could drop my needle run, run around, around laser yeah. okay yeah so Putting the needle down for positioning is a great thing to do, mm -hmm. but please remember to lift the needle up before you move right. the quilt because you don't want to rip a hole in your quilt or bend a needle, throw your timing off, yeah. any of that fun stuff. But that's a great, great tip for doing pantographs. Awesome. Okay, anything else we need to cover about pantographs? Uh, one thing I was thinking about while I was actually stitching is I can't remember if I mentioned when you come into a point, you want to pause. Let that machine have a time to make the stitches. Mm -hmm. And that is actually why I prefer to use cruise mode, right. because the needle will continually move. If I'm in precision and I come into a point, that needle might not go down in that point. And it doesn't matter how long I pause there, the needle's not going to go down if I'm not moving the machine. Right. So cruise mode is my, my mode of preference. OK, excellent. So. OK, Kay. well, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching our Watch and Learn this week. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll have more pointers and uh, help you all on your quilting journey. Be sure to like this and to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And share it with your friends who enjoy quilting. And above all, have fun quilting this week.